Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have Stephen Kimball, who's one of the top direct response marketers. 20 years? It's been 20 years, Stephen? Correct. 20, All right, 20 yeah. years. His copywriting has made millions of dollars in extra profits for direct response companies, big and small. He, I couldn't even get through the huge list of companies on his site, and he said that's only maybe half of them. His clients include companies like GE, Omaha Steaks, National Geographic, Cutco Knives, and many, many more. Stephen, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. So, you know, since this inspired insider, Stephen, I always ask about... What's been your lowest moment and then how you push forward through it? Um, you know, for, for me as a copywriter, uh, as a freelance guy, um, you know, I, I, I tell people, you know, I, I, I eat what I kill. Um, it's up to me to find my own business. Right. Um, you know, it's mostly referred to me, but, you know, no, no I, don't have a, I don't have a sales guy out there um, finding work for me. And so... You know, there seems to, sometimes there's phases where sometimes I'm so overwhelmed with work that I don't really know how I'm going to do it. Sometimes it starts to taper off. Um, and sometimes there will be a time when people are telling me how good I am. I'm a great, and, uh, you know, great writer, good marketing head. Um, and I feel like, man, I'm, I must be doing a good job. But then all of a sudden there's these periods when... Um, you know, everything is going to hell at the same time. This client's not happy and this piece didn't work. Yeah. This client's kind of slow to pay and it's like it all converges and I think uh, the sucky day or sucky week. It all hits at once. Yeah, but it's not often. It's, you know, it's peaks and valleys and yeah. I find out, I found the, the best way for me to deal with the life of a freelance copywriter yeah. Which is not difficult. It's not like I'm digging ditches for a living. It's it's still a pretty good gig, yeah. but it's just to keep my focus on taking good care of my clients. You know, writing my best, going the extra mile for them. Not not trying to figure out if I've spent too much time for what they paid me. Um, you know, I, I've got to focus on making sure everything I write is absolutely as good as I can get it and taking the time with it and like, you know, not being lazy like Peter taught me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a matter of, uh, you know, things are going well or things are going well, trying to keep my head in check. I'm just a guy who does a job and I'm trying to do the best job I can. Um, and ultimately, I want my clients to succeed and we'll all succeed together if we can do that. So how do you keep your head in check? Like when all that stuff happens at once, the perfect storm where you have you know, a client's unhappy and, you know, another person's calling, another person's slow to, to pay. Yeah. What do you do to kind of push through that and kind of, you know, when you're in that, it's a little bit easier said than done to, to get out of it. Because um, it never lasts. If, if it did, that would spell a large, that would, that would indicate a larger problem that my business is never going well. That something's wrong, um, but the low points and the bad times—they're uh, not common. They're not always. They're usually things run pretty well because I—I take—I want to be in control of the the process in the situation, and uh, you know I'm not a control freak, but I want things to go the way I want them to go. Mm -hmm. So the the low times don't come about that often. When they do, I have to remember that. During 10 years of me being on my own, there's never been a sustained period of time when it just sucked all the time. It was for a day or a week or a week and a half until it you know, was resolved. And uh, you know, over 10 years, very rarely, I can count on one hand times I have not been paid for some reason or another. It rarely happens. I'm able to appease clients. I think that's how they work working with me because I'm not uh, fanatical. I'm not demanding. I'm not, uh, I don't think I'm, you know, God's gift to copywriting, but they know they can talk to me and, and reason with me and we can, you know, get things done. Yeah. So on the other side, Stephen, what's been one of the proudest moments? Uh, 
I don't know. I don't know if I have a proudest moment. I mean, I've uh, you know I've spoken at the DMA a couple times, um, which was good. Um, you know, I've landed some big clients and some big fees. Uh, you know, I, I've done work for most of the big direct marketing companies in this country and even around the world. And you know, when I get them, you know, I know it's because I, I've worked hard. To, to develop and keep a reputation as being a good writer and a good guy in general and someone that's easy to work and deal with. Yep. They know they can trust me. Um, proud moments, I, was, I don't know. There was a time where you celebrated, like you remember just pumping your fist that you got this big contract or big client and maybe you, you took a vacation or you did something selfish uh, or you bought something fun. Uh, I'm good at taking vacations. Okay. Um, I did, you know, I think the first time I ever got put on a retainer, um, I had a client <laughs> agree to pay me a certain, you know, set amount a month. Um, and I went and bought a Hummer. I, I had a Jeep and, uh, I've always wanted a Hummer. So I went and bought a big black, uh, pimped out Hummer and told my wife that, uh, his, monthly payments were more than going to pay for the Hummer. And she rolled her eyes and said, that's fine. And uh, it was the first, I'd had some nice cars, but it was the first car that I had that I really, really, really wanted. Mm -hmm. That I was really psyched to own. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I did that That's once. a good one. I like that one. You need that every once in a while, right? Every once in a while. Yeah. Not that you need a Hummer every every day or anything, but... Um, so, so you know, I have one last question for you. I appreciate your time and, and sharing your great stories. Um, first, tell people where they can find you. Where should, you know, where should they check, out, uh, check you out online? Uh, skcopywriting.com. Now, how did you come up with the – so you have the headline. It's a pretty cool graphical – when you scroll down, the kind of words go off the page and then they come together. What made you think of that? And uh, I had nothing to do with it. I, ha I had a cool web designer. You had to agree to it, though. So you thought it was it was he, good. He, he was he's very talented, very very talented web designer, and I uh, had an old site that I didn't like, and I said I really need something uh, punchy. I need something cool. You know, a lot of people don't really go to my website. It, it's mostly there uh, to make sure that I'm legitimate, that I'm really You're a real person. person. Yeah, right. Um, rarely does anybody find me because they went searching for me. Almost all my uh, work comes from referrals and repeat clients, and so um, I need at least needed to look good. You know, it's like the you know the shoemakers kids with their bare feet. I had to at least have a website that did me justice. Yes, for sure. So yeah, so it's skcopywriting.com. Uh, Steve, my last question is: you know, we've talked a lot about a lot of different stories from direct response, um, campaigns. What should we leave people with? I mean, there's a lot that we talked about. What should they start doing now or what can we leave them? What kind of advice should we leave them with? Hmm. Uh, you know, it's like it says on my website, uh, marketing is, you know, some people look at it as a necessary evil. Some, some companies love it. But you can't sell you can't sell something that people don't know about, and so uh, you know every almost any company does some form of marketing somewhere TV, radio, advert, you know, print, uh, mail, whatever it is on the web, um, you know, and, and some of them just do a bad job because they don't know they don't know what a good job is, mm -hmm. um, and so you know. I, <laughs> I think a lot of companies are just missing the point with uh, their marketing. They they don't realize what they could be doing with it, um, or they don't understand their market well enough, or they don't understand their message, you know, what it should be, and they haven't built a good enough foundation to start with. And, um, you know, I'm always happy to help, you know, consult with, I'll spend as much time on the phone with a client as they want me to, to help them get their head in the marketing game and understand it from my point of view. You know, they're busy running their company. Um, that takes up their time. And so sometimes they just don't have the time to devote to figuring out what their customer wants to hear. And so, uh, you know, whether they get it from me or from someone else, it's worth the investigation of uh, getting those core 
core thoughts down on paper. Yeah. So repeat those again because I think those are important. You know, you want people to find out one kind of who their target customer is, right? Right. Who are they selling to? Uh, you know, what are they selling? Who are they selling to? Where are they going to find them? What are they going to tell them? Yeah. Uh, you know, so they, they need to answer those questions. You know, somebody taught me, uh, I remember who or when, you know, to, to, to picture the person who is my target audience. You know, what are they wearing? Where do they live? What car do they drive? What kind of house do they live in? Do they have kids? What's their job? What do they like to do on weekends? Uh, you know, really understand the life of the uh, that, you know, individual. Right. Um, most companies, I think, have not done that. Um, that they have not put that much thought into who they're trying to sell to. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a lot of it's just experience. I've been doing it for so long, it's second nature to me. But I understand that that's not second nature. There's so many other parts of running a business that, uh, you know, have to be tended to. Yeah. Stephen, this has been fantastic. I very much appreciate it. Uh, thank you so Good. much. You bet. Yeah. All right. I appreciate the time. All right, see ya.